Good morning, this is Travis P11. I'd like to welcome you back to the channel. And today we're gonna do a little cleaning of the CZ75 SPO1 or SPO1 tactical model. Uh, depending on which model you have, this video should work for you. Uh, before we get started on this cleaning video, I just wanna talk about a few of the products that we're gonna be using for the cleaning. I'm not endorsed by any of these companies, none of these products are free, but this is typically what I would use to clean a handgun like this, especially uh, if, this, if this is your first handgun, you know, you might be buying these supplies. I have a lot of people that ask me questions, where do you buy these supplies at, do you recommend a brand, and so on. So here's my take, and this is what I would use. Uh, for starters, you can use an old toothbrush if you want to. Um, this is just an Allen brand cleaning brush. I bought it at Walmart. You can buy sets of two or three of these. They're inexpensive. A nice nylon bristle brush to just get some of the crud out of the areas that need it. You also may want to use the little polymer or plastic cleaning rod that comes with the pistol. If, if yours comes with one, if not, you can pick these up at the store too. They're kind of nice because you can run patches through them. You can put bore brushes on the end, bore mops, and so on. These are handy to have. You can also use a traditional cleaning rod, uh, you know, brass or copper, whatever. Uh, and that way, if you want to put a bristle on the end of it to run it through the barrel, you can do so. But this is going to be optional, and I'll show you what I use instead. For the actual cleaning solvents themselves, I like to use um, Cleanse Oil Field and Range. This is nice, uh, kind of a CLP, it cleans, lubes, and protects. It's gonna take care of everything in one or two steps. You wipe it on, you wipe it off, you're basically good to go. And if it's really dirty, you wipe it on, wipe it off, and put one more light coat of oil on the product, and you're, you're all set. So Cleanse Oil works pretty good. I've been using this for many months now, and I've been really happy with the performance of it. Uh, we've also got Safari Land Break Free CLP, which you can buy at Walmart, sporting goods stores, mom and pop gun stores. It's been a little hard to find lately just because so many new gun owners are out there. People are buying up these supplies. Uh, production is just starting to catch up with demand, but Safari Land Break Free CLP works great. You know, some people like to use REM oil. You use whatever works best for you. Now, I have been criticized in a couple videos for not showing how to take the copper out of a barrel. Uh, if you start to get a copper buildup in the grooves of your barrel, or you start to notice deposits in the grooves in your barrel, you might want to get yourself a copper remover. This is a great one. Uh, breakthrough Clean Technology Copper Remover. I'm not going to be using it on this barrel, but you can. You spray it down the barrel. You go through the back with a bore brush a couple times. It's going to bust out those copper deposits. Most of the guns I test on this channel don't have enough rounds through them that I can justify actually taking the time or even using a copper remover product. But if you've got a, a rifle with a high, high round count or a pistol with a high round count, you're starting to see those, those deposits of copper. You're starting to see some buildup in the barrel. The grooves aren't nice and shiny. It's probably a good time to use the, the copper remover. And obviously, you just want to follow the instructions on the bottle. And you're set to go. Won't be necessary here. We also have uh, cleaning patches. Now, you can cut up an old cotton t-shirt if you want to. As for me, I just use these um, Allen patches that I buy up at Walmart. They're just pre-cut, all set to go, and they work good for the channel. Now, instead of using the one-piece cleaning rod with a bore brush going from the back to the front and all that fun stuff, I make it easy. I just use a bore snake. We're not going to have a lot of rounds through this pistol when we take it to the range anyway. Uh, bore snakes cost about 10 bucks. They've got the bristles on them to clean out the bore. They've got what we call the mop, the cloth part that follows the bristles. That'll clean out your barrel for you. So a couple passes through the barrel. And typically, typically most of your barrels are going to come fairly clean. I know some people just cannot stand these. And we can argue that down in the comments down below. If you're more of a traditional cleaning rod person, you go right ahead, you do you. As for me, I just use the bore snakes and uh, they're good to go. There's many brands, uh, Real Avid, Allen, Hoppies. They all make great bore snakes. I've tried them all, not had any major issues with them. And finally, some caffeine. Today, we're drinking one of the most uh, underrated coffees on the planet, uh, Great Value French Roast. It is absolutely fantastic. Check it out. It'll keep you nice and awake as you do the uh, cleaning of your next firearm. Also, finally, I do recommend some gloves. And the main reason why is because a lot of these cleaners are petroleum-based, and you're going to be encountering lead and carbon and all kinds of other gook. So it's a nice idea to have it. Your hands will smell nice and clean once you get in and clean the firearm and uh, it'll also keep the oil and stuff out of your skin and keep your hands protected and so on so uh, without further ado let's go ahead and get started first things first let's go ahead and ensure that the firearm is in fact unloaded now i'm always doing everything from an angle here so it's a little bit awkward at times and i do apologize for that press your magazine release button which is right here magazine is empty go ahead and grab the top of the slide pull back confirm that the chamber is empty and it is if you want you can lock the chamber open by pulling back on the slide and pressing up on the locking lever, which is right here. That will keep your slide locked back and you can verify that the gun in fact is unloaded. So we will go ahead and set that off to the side. Now as for the magazines themselves, I like to put just a drop or two of oil on a cleaning cloth and uh, we're gonna go ahead and wipe off those magazines. Okay, so just go ahead and wipe off your magazines. If you have any excess oil on any of the metal, you can wipe it off with a dry patch if you want to. By the way, this gun is on loan to us from Stan, uh, the owner of SS Pond in Lexington, Nebraska. Uh, contact information for SS Pond is down below in the description box. 
Uh, SS Pawn's been a long time supporter of the channel. A lot of the guns that you see in these videos, uh, Stan did in fact loan to me and I do range tests with them and cleaning videos and so on. And uh, SS Pawn's a great shop to go through again, located in Lexington, Nebraska. Give SS Pawn a call and they will take care of your firearms needs. All right, so I would say that that's uh, fairly clean. You can disassemble the magazines if you want to, but that's a different video for a different time. So let's go and pull that off to the side. There we go. Okay, so here's the deal. Uh, the SPO on tactical. So the tactical model has a decocking lever on it. So when you push the decocking lever down, it's going to put the hammer down in half cock. So that's the state that we want to be in before we begin the disassembly of the slide. Now, if you have a traditional SPO one that's not a tactical model, you're going to have a safety lever. So what you're going to want to do is depending on what kind of a situation you are in, pull the hammer back halfway till it locks. That's first setting. And then you're going to want to put the safety on. Okay. Now, obviously I can't do anything because the decocker model leaves it in half cock. And so we're all set to go. So again, non-tactical model, make sure the hammer is half cocked and then go ahead and slip your safety on. And we can go to the next part of the cleaning process. Now there's a couple grooves back here in the uh, slide. I don't know if you guys can see them. Some little, some little marks up here. Okay. This mark right here and the mark on the bottom of the frame, you want to make sure that those two align before we do the next step. So depending on how you hold it, I usually grip the gun like this and just pull back a little bit with my right hand until the lines are marked, until the two marks are, are aligned. And then at that point, I can go to the next step. So it's a little bit tricky. So when you have those two marks aligned and you're holding the slide back, you're gonna have to press on this button right here and that's gonna cause the takedown lever to pop out. Okay, so this can be a little bit difficult. In fact, the manual even says use the butt of a magazine if you want to, to push out that lever. I've never done that before in this pistol, so we're gonna see exactly what happens. So, so it's gonna take a little bit of force, but it will start to come out as you can see right here. And we'll go ahead and just pull that out and set that off to the side. Okay, now at this point, you can just push forward with your thumb on the back of the slide. The slide's gonna come right off. And uh, we're gonna start off by cleaning out the, uh, the bottom of the frame. Oh, one more thing. You're definitely gonna need some Q-tips or some cotton swabs. So make sure you have some of those handy too. Sorry about that, I should've mentioned that sooner. Okay, so the key here is to not over lubricate while you're doing this cleaning. Okay, so I'm looking down here, there's a lot of gunk, there's a lot of buildup in this pistol. So just take a couple drops on a patch and just go ahead and wipe out the inside of the frame, inside of the dust cover. You've got rails that we're gonna wanna clean off to these tracks inside the lower part of the frame, which is kind of unique to that uh, CZ design or any other pistol that uses the uh, CZ, what, CZ75 design. I could be wrong about that, but that's typically what you see on some other pistols that are out there. So this one's pretty bad. We're just gonna keep wiping it off until it comes clean. Uh, you don't wanna over lubricate. And the main reason why is because you don't want to have a buildup of dust or dirt or grime because all that oil and all that lubrication is kind of sticky. And so you can get uh, a buildup inside your pistol. If you have too much oil, it could cause some malfunctions if you're operating in a really sandy environment and so on. So again, a little bit of crud's coming off of here. Something I like to do is to put a patch on a cleaning rod and just go down and clean out the uh, inside of the uh, pistol grip. There can be a buildup inside of there too. You can also run a dry patch down the pistol grip too when you get done. And we'll show you just what comes off this uh, gun because this may not have been cleaned before in this particular area. Be surprised. Just kind of wipe it around a little bit. Yeah, it's nice and dirty. There you go. And again, you can run another patch down there if you want to that's dry with no oil on it. That's certainly up to you if you want to go that route. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. We're going to do a little bit of fine detail work. So we'll just put a drop of oil on a Q-tip. We're gonna go ahead and wipe out the inside tracks. You'll see them inside the frame when you're looking. Here you go, right down in there, on the top also. Hopefully this is all in focus for you guys. I can't really tell with my camera, but kind of get in there and just start to wipe stuff off a little bit. Uh, nice thing about the cleanse oil, it's not gonna leave uh, you know, a, a real grimy film on this. It actually dries fairly thin, and that's one of the things that I do like about it. Get that off, okay, just get around this rear part. Okay, just kind of wipe it all down with a little bit of oil. It's totally okay. There you go. It's pretty dirty. Go inside those tracks one more time. Again, you can keep doing this until it comes clean. You can also wipe off the, uh, the parts that we've touched with oil with a dry Q-tip if you just want to wipe off any excess oil. Obviously, you don't want to leave the gun wet inside, you know. There we go. Get inside these little blocks in between right here. Go and wipe those out. Get inside the holes for the takedown lever. There you go. Now I'm just gonna take the Q-tip and with the dry side and just gently wipe off any excess oil. And again, you might start to see more muck and crud coming off because those cleaners are starting to work their way into the parts. 
again, you take as much time as you feel like you need to until everything comes clean. Okay, so this looks pretty good right now. This looks decent. Everything's nice and shiny. Everything's looking good. I don't see any buildup on it anymore. So we will go ahead and just set that off to the side. Now we will wipe the entire pistol down with a couple drops of oil on a patch just to clean things up a little bit. Okay, moving on, we've got your takedown lever. Let's go ahead and wipe that off. Light coating oil on that. And again, you can hit it with a dry patch when you're done. Now, some people do make comments. They say, oh my God, you just over lubricate those guns, etc." cetera. And, and I tell them, I, I tell people, you know, wipe off any excess oil that you're not comfortable with. If it's dripping wet, obviously you want to go ahead and, and take it off. So, all right, now we've got the, uh, the slide, the recoil spring, the guide rod, and the barrel. Just go ahead and grab the uh, recoil spring that's going to come out. This is not a captive design, so if you're not holding on to this, it will shoot and just go flying right back at you. So definitely make sure that you get a good grasp on that. It's not a lot of spring pressure, but there's enough that it could go flying out. This is a polymer cleaning rod. I'm sorry, a polymer guide rod. So just go ahead and wipe that off. Again, a couple drops of oil on a patch. Set it off to the side. And we'll go ahead and wipe off the uh, recoil spring here, which is a little bit dirty. I'm going to be putting this back in exactly as it came out. This spring, I think it's okay if you happen to reverse it. But again, we're just going to put it back the way that it was uh, from the factory or the prior owner, although I have had people reverse springs before on certain pistols, and that can cause some issues, uh, but uh, I think this one looks okay. So we'll go ahead and just reassemble that and just set that off to the side. Okay, moving on to the uh, slide and the barrel. Go ahead and just pull the barrel out. We're going to go ahead and just give the barrel a general wipe down. Really pay attention to the rear. You really are going to get a buildup back in this portion right here, so you might want to hit that with your brush. If necessary, if you see like a physical buildup of, of grime on it, you want to definitely make sure you brush it off and leave it clean. So we're going to leave this fairly wet so these cleaners can really make their way into the steel. The lubricants can really make their way in there. Just go and wipe off every little surface of the barrel. Grab a Q-tip. Drop of oil. Go ahead and wipe out the inside of this lug. You can see we got a, a bit of a buildup in there. This has been fired quite a bit. Just looking at how much stuff is coming off on the... Uh, on the cleaning supplies and the cloths and so on. So this is definitely more lubricated than we're gonna leave it when we're done with it. Okay, now the next thing you wanna do is just put a couple drops of oil down the barrel. That's what we like to call marinating the barrel. And this is going to allow that cleaner to just soak in, especially in a really dirty barrel. Set that off to the side. Now for the inside of the slide, a couple drops of oil on a patch. Go ahead and wipe out the inside of the uh, slide. Get in every little crack, crevice, nook, cranny, etc. Wipe off the uh, front portion where your firing pin is. Don't get any oil down there though. You want to make sure you keep that part, you know, as, as little lubricant as possible because you don't want to get oil down in that chamber. That'll cause some fouling and some issues if you get oil down there and so on. This is going to be a bit of a tight fit for my fingers right here. So I'm going to go ahead and put a patch back on my little polymer cleaning rod. And we're going to use that to scrub out the front portion. This dust cover down here underneath the barrel makes for a little bit of a tight fit. And I want to make sure it definitely gets clean. So again, just taking my little rod and my little patch here, just gonna scrub it out. Now I like to do is just take a dry Q-tip and just go ahead and wipe out the uh, face right here where your firing pin comes out. Just go and wipe that out. Scrub behind that extractor. And uh, there may be some, some carbon, some fouling, some spent powder that's gonna come off on that. We wanna keep this as dry as possible. Okay, we'll go ahead and just set that off to the side. Okay, so now to clean the barrel, you got some options. Uh, with the oil in the barrel, at this point, you could put a bristle brush on this one-piece cleaning rod, go from, the, go from the rear to the front, take off the brush, repeat, go through. Don't ever pull the brush back unless you absolutely have to. And then after that, you're going to run a couple patches through, rear to front again. You can do that if you want to. That's fine. Me, I'm just going to use the boar snake. Uh, when you use your boar snake, now there is already oil in the barrel. But what I like to do anyway is just put a drop of oil or two drops of oil in front and after the uh, bristle brush, brush portion of the snake itself. And what's gonna happen is as you pull the boar snake through, this is going to dry the barrel, okay? So it's gonna come out nice and clean. You can always run a patch through it if you want to. That's uh, totally up to you, okay? All right, so we'll go ahead and push the weight through, run the boar snake through. Just go and pull it through a couple times. It should go through with no issues. There we go. Check the bore. Yeah, we're going to run it through a couple more times. I'm going to do this two more times, and then we'll come right back. All right, so your barrel should be nice and shiny. When you look down there, you should be able to see the grooves. If you do, you are good to go. One thing I forgot to mention, okay, just a drop of oil on a Q-tip here. Uh, make sure you get in these tracks and get them scrubbed out and get them nice and clean right here on the inside of the slide. We're going to run through that real quick. Just scrub a little bit, okay? 
those tracks. And then we're going to go ahead and just uh, hit it with a dry Q-tip and just wipe out the excess oil. And you can see it did take off a little bit of muck and crud there. Really get down in there, good. There we go. Okay. Last thing, just a little thin bit of oil on this rim right here of the slide, this lower portion of the slide, just wipe that down. You can see that there's metal to metal contact on here on this portion. And you can tell because your paint is gonna be wearing off, your finish is gonna start wearing off in those places. And so that's where you know where you need to lubricate. All right, let's get this cleaned up and then we will begin the process of reassembly. Okay, for reassembly, it's pretty simple. Just go ahead and drop your barrel back in the slide. Make sure it locks into place when you pull back on it. Go ahead and take your spring and your guide rod with the plastic portion facing the rear, the open spring on the front. Go ahead and push that in. What you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to push the rear of the guide rod onto this platform right here so that it locks into place. You're gonna to have to pull down with a little bit of pressure. Just about launched it. <laughs> and uh, pull back and it will lock into place. So from the side, it should look just like this. Okay, if it looks like that, you are in good shape. There's a little bit of a, uh, bit of a cut out there for that, uh, that guide rod to sit on. Okay, it's gonna look just like that. All right, and now for reassembly, this part can be just a little bit tricky. Um, what you wanna do is go ahead and put your slide and your frame back together. Just go ahead and put the tracks, oh, oh, real quick before I forget. Okay, drop oil on a Q-tip and put a little bit of oil down this channel on each side of the slide before we forget. Go and wipe that down. This is the uh, only gun I have in the, in the collection that I've tested in a long time that actually has this type of a setup on it. So I always forget that you have those little extra channels there. They might be a little bit dirty and that's fine too. There we go. So the outside also, got it? All right, put that off to the side. Okay, now go ahead and to reassemble, just pull back. You're gonna wanna line up the tracks and the channels together. There we go. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to pull back on the slide again so that the two lines are lined up and then we're gonna push the takedown lever back in from the side so we can start to kind of get that ready. Just kind of set that takedown lever like this. Okay, and go ahead and push back. Okay, pushing your takedown lever. It should snap into place and you're all good to go. Again, having those two hash marks aligned is the key to it. Uh, you can go ahead and cycle it a few times if you want to. It's nice and smooth. Okay, go and check the chamber. Make sure you have an empty magazine. Okay, go ahead and drop the hammer. Okay, cock it back, make sure it stays locked open on an empty mag. It does, you check the magazine, it's empty, chamber's empty. And go ahead and fire. You can also pull the hammer back, test your decocker or your safety, depending on which model of SPO1 you're rocking. And the last part is gonna be a wipe down with oil and then a dry patch, and we are basically done. So you don't have to be intimidated by the takedown on a model like this. It's a little bit different than say a Glock or maybe a, an M&P. But uh, in the end, there's not a whole lot of difference between a lot of these pistols when you take them apart, especially just your more modern uh, semi-automatic firearms, a lot of similar uh, processes that you go through to, to take them apart, so, okay. Now you can let this oil sit and soak in for a little while if you want, or you can immediately wipe it off with a dry patch. You'll have a nice sheen to it, nice protective finish, and uh, you're all set to go. So that is how you disassemble and clean the CZ SPO1 Tactical, the CZ75 SPO1 Tactical. And uh, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe and uh, check me out on my podcast called Caliber Corner, which we do Saturday mornings at 8 a.m. Central Time. We talk guns and firearms and have a great time. Uh, but in the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. We've got a ton, a ton of great videos for you, a lot of great cleaning videos. Uh, shout out to SS Pond for loaning us this uh, handgun for cleaning. In the meantime, I want you guys to have fun. I want you to be safe. And as you know, we will talk to you soon. All right, bye-bye.